Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's a little bit of a weird one. Um, how do I explain this? Um, it's Darkest Timeline podcast. Um, we've got a guest which uh, I've been threatening for a long time. Um, anybody who's eagle-eyed and who follows along will notice that the number of this Darkest Time on podcast is a lot later than where we were actually up to. Uh, that's because I've jumped it ahead of a few others because uh, it's a special episode because we've got a special guest. So stick with us, you'll understand. Uh, this is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline podcast. See, that's something that's going to be different sitting in this room. No noise of me sitting down at the start of a Darkest Timeline podcast where I go, Ugh. Uh, Hello, it's me, it's Cookie. It's, uh, it's the Darkest Timeline podcast. Um, do you guys remember many moons ago that I threatened that one day I might get a guest for the Darkest Timeline podcast? Well, guess what? Today is that day. Winging his way here from Places Unknown. Not the number one podcast, but the uh, the, the 20th most listened to podcast guest, Miss Luke Hemingway. I mean, this is obviously going to be number one after today. Well, so I wanted to get into that. I was like, well, we should probably strip down what made that podcast number one was it the subject matter or was it the guest that's the real question obviously a little bit of a little bit, a bit of column a, a little bit of column b mainly guest mainly guest mainly guest of course and this will be the is it the litmus test and also probably like people like tuning in to see how much of a terrible driver you are. And they obviously were proven wrong. Mm, there was that. Um, so we've got a guest. And the way that this came about was that Luke's been threatening for at least three months to come and do another podcast. Well, I'm obviously here, like any guest on a podcast, I'm going to promote my new book, my new show. <laughs> I was gonna say. CD. I was gonna say. Yeah. What, what are you promoting? Yeah. Um, promote. So, very rudely, just sending a one-word text. Um, so you've been saying for ages, come on. I've been like, come on. Uh, this, this, ladies and gentlemen, was that was one of the guests I was hinting at. Uh, this will potentially turn into a. Sp- special episode depending on how we're going to run but we are going to run it like a darkest timeline podcast which i feel will be like a bit like a room 101 maybe like i'll be talking about stuff i hate and you can be like yeah i hate that too or like with most games you'll hate it i love it (laughs) or i love it and you'll hate it i've got a list as as we know twice on this list Oh yeah, it's like, it's Christmas Eve Eve. Now, as we know, I don't normally date a podcast, but I'm so up to date with podcasts that this will potentially be released one week today, if not sooner. Um, I've got a list, I've looked through it. I personally feel that you will have comments on the second of two of two things from the last week something that I think you will know all about. Um, definitely the TV, definitely the games, especially that guy there. Um, and you and I are both owners of Oculus Quests. So I can talk about VR and you can talk back. So no one else have VR that you talk to? No, I've got, um, I've got, Another person. Wow. Uh, that I do. Popular. It, it's in. such. It's such a big. It's such a big thing these days. Um, although I do feel that after the day after tomorrow, that number might almost double. 
Well, the fact it's still out of stock in places like Argos and so loads of places. Obviously, Black Friday hit the hit Oculus in general hard. Like places couldn't keep stock of it. Um, there's been a lot of issues around people buying the Oculus Go. What? Because they think it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, one of the channels I, that I watch on YouTube was saying if there's like the Go sold out on Black Friday there's going to be a lot of disappointed people yeah. Christmas morning and a lot of returns essentially so <sighs> thought I deleted my entire list there I just pressed new note um, first thing get it out of the way because it's I don't know how much well, we've had a conversation about it, but I'll tell you what it is, and then you can... Uh, um, something's happened in the last week is, before I finished work last week, I'm currently now done for two weeks. Ooh. Although I'm already well into that two weeks, because I finished work last week. So, um, An email was sent to podcast alum Robert Rafton, and podcast alum Thomas Quinn, but not podcast alum... Mr. Cook, saying that as of the 31st of December 2019, Gym Pass will no longer be offered to staff of our company. Um, I didn't receive this email. However, I have had an email today from my gym. I have not. I never received it. I, I was a, mem- a member of it. Um, I immediately went on our internal communicating system to you and was like, Freaking gym pass is getting pulled. So I paid £20 a month for gym pass. Gym pass was an absolute steal. It was, it was. such a good value it was. thing. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come to it in a minute. Um, so I paid £20 a month and I got... I think the monthly membership from the gym I'm at is like 36 quid. So I got that. I also got membership for the gym that's over the road which means I can go swimming for free and I can take the baby and one of my other children for free. If uh, I, I, So, like, the entire family were going swimming and it was costing six quid. Oh, That's 12 like, quid. It cost me probably more than that to go to Yearsley. Yeah. So it was like six quid for five of us to go swimming. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, I've already had an email from my gym saying, hey, we heard that uh, gym pass is no longer being offered to your company. So uh, here's what we'll do for you. It's like, oh, this will be good. So you don't, you don't have to give us no money in January. It's like, here it comes. As long as you give us 30 quid a month after that. It's like, I can't afford 30 pounds a month. I was barely scraping by on the £20 a month. The only thing about it is that it was such good value. You'd go to so many gyms with it. It's like, it's worth it just for that. It's worth it to go swimming twice a month. Yeah. That in itself, it was worth it. So, not a great way to end the year with a... Two weeks notice. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. The worst, I think one of the worst elements was that the person who'd sent the email had put on the bottom, uh, one of the things was, oh, we are going to be offering another discount system, but it's not anywhere near as good. And you won't be able to find out what it is until the 2nd of January. Yeah. Uh, But they put on there, if you want to discuss this, you can either email me or contact me on like internal communicators. Like, poor, poor person. Oh, I bet nobody's emailed you. And nobody's come to you and gone, why would you do this? It's one of those. They they gave this flimsy excuse of, um, oh, we found that anybody who signed up to Gym Pass was already a gym member. Right? Those are the people that use, use gym memberships. Yeah. It, 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 was a, it was a bad show at the end of the year um, from... But that also makes me think how many other things they're going to get rid of yeah. within work. So I can't remember last time we saw free fruit at work. So we get free fruit, like, was it every two weeks or something? Something like that. Yeah, I've um, not seen that for a long time. No, I've not looked. You get, you get the milk. We get the milk. Yeah, we I get the milk. I don't think that's going to last. They put oat milk in there mm-hmm. as well now because 
Because that was what was voted for, or cost effective or something. Um, We still get it. I mean, from from our perspective, our quote unquote building is smaller than your building. Ours like the main HQ of the north. Yeah, Um, ours is just like it's like two halves of a floor upstairs and downstairs. The rest of the building is taken over by other companies. Um, so I still, I still see that we do get the fruit and stuff, but I know that any business, any big business, any business has to year on year cut those costs. So I, yeah, I agree that there probably will be things going out the door that new boss, new rules. Hey, um, as I mentioned, I, I did date this podcast, something I don't normally do. Although there's been a couple recently. Did a lot of podcast coding this weekend. And I mean a lot. You guys are in for a real treat this week. With it being Christmas. CookieCast is sending you many Christmas presents this week. Um, And there was a couple in there that I dated for various reasons. I have dated this one. um, Which brings us to our next subject. Um, Mr. Williams and Mr. Panas. Podcast alum. Uh, I got, I, I was real sneaky and I was like, oh, can you help me find James some uh, some wanky beers? And then I said to James, can you help me find Paul some wanky beers? Uh, Mr. Panas phoned it in somewhat. He was like, oh, I'll just go and get on fire. I was like, okay. He was like, I bought this box. Like, Makes life easier. Okay. Then I showed him a picture that Leanne had sent me of a pack of punk... IPA. Oh, IPAs, yeah. He was like, yeah, get, he was like, yeah, get that. Like, you've already got some. He was like, yeah, that's better. I'm like, okay. He was like, if you still want them, they're fine, all this. Paul, on the other hand, was like, right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to this shop for these beers. We're going to go to this shop for these beers. We'll go to that shop for these type. We have to go to different shops for different types. I don't think I'm that bothered about beer. So... We went to Marks and Spencers to start our journey down the wanky beer route. The beer town is usually quite cheap, isn't it? So what I've written on my list was, the way I've written it, is shopping for wanky beers. What I should have put was, sensory overload shopping for wanky beer. It's... I, I, I don't think I've ever had to shop for something that is so... Like, there's a million different ones. Craft beer is big, man. <sighs> it's huge. Huge. Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokes has just... Well, I said just. Recently bought a brewery in, like, Staten Island or somewhere like that. You know, it is big money. These people are going to get into these beers. Yeah, because the other thing about it is it's big money because you can sell it for ridiculous mm. amounts of money. I'll tell you what, though, a lot of them, not being a beer aficionado, a lot of them taste a hell of a lot the same. So, they, oh, this has got flavours of this and that. It doesn't taste like beer. Sounds like It sounds like a lot of wine to me. I mean, I always... I, somebody once gave me a glass of wine from a bottle of wine that was 160 quid. And I drank it and went... It tastes like wine. It tastes like wine. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but then maybe, you've got maybe to say I, um, to them, it was just a bit common and, you know, just give me a bottle of, Moret- of Moretti or something like that. But then you have Pint to say, Peroni. oh, you can, you can really tell the difference. Can't. No. Absolutely not. So it's like, okay, let's go and get the wanky beers. It, I, me and Paul went and we took Sam with us. And it, there was points where I honestly thought that we were in an adult shop. Because the noises that come out of them, it's like, oh, oh, look at this. Oh, I'm like, I don't think three men should be stood in the middle, in the, <laughs> the middle of my what I don't understand about with it. With the though, noises. Right? Is that these people that go and like, look at these beers, they've not tried them. So how do they know because how good they're going to be? the community of the wanky beer drinkers, they've all tried at least one of them. So between them, Oh, that one's real nice. That one's real nice. I've bought them <laughs> on the description alone before. Like, look at the side of the can or whatever. 
Oh yeah, that sounds like like something like I'm gonna like. Tastes shit. The, it's the, really the, sour. The, it's like there was one that got me. One of the first things that Paul said was, "You want to get this? That's real nice." And I think it was a clementine saison. And I was like, I, I don't know what's happening. Well, right as now. a non-alcohol drinker at the moment, you <laughs> for, were for, for me. It was like I, I don't know what's happening right now. And then there was, there was a longer story. Basically, what had happened was I, I went to I said to Pan because we went to, we went to two of the three or four shops that were mentioned. And I had Tremblay Madness. So that was mentioned. We never went. Really. So we did Marks and Spencers. At Monk's Cross, and we did Asda because apparently we had to go to Asda for porters. Yeah, I mean there were better places than you know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't. It it's a uh, proper like out of my depths, which is why I had to get two people on the case and ended up roping in a third. Um. So by the time we'd got to Asda, I was like, we, we me and Panos have dropped the ball on this one. So, I made a mental note of the ones that Paul was like, oh my God. One of them, he got a bottle down off the top shelf and it was a coffee chocolate. Stout. Probably. Oh, Porter. Porter Possibly, honestly. I think I've tried one similar. It was a a big black bottle like that. Like a, I think it was called Mocha or something. And that seemed to be like, between him and Sam, I was like, they, they were, they were, Diamond cut harder that You would point. have loved where I tried one of them. It was in a, a tiny little independent record shop in Sheffield. Nice. And like, it was the most hipster place. How much smashed avocado was there? Hey, I had that the other night for tea. The poached egg on. Oh, oh Jesus. And some brown toast. Oh, Jesus. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, Jesus. There's nothing wrong with smashed avocados. Oh, man. I slept just even sliced but avocado. There's, there's plenty wrong with it. Oh, you, know the, you know the avocado market is single-handedly wiping out the population of bees. Yes, I know. And okay, people cool. say that avocados aren't vegan, but... Well... Um, so, we went through this whole thing, getting all these beers. Once it sort of topped about 20 quid. But I don't think I... I yeah, It was like, right... That's me done. I'm tapped out. I think Paul might have gone to one, if not two more shops. Well, what was well it? I say shops. One Co-op of the, and, and... Brew York. <laughs> All right. He went to get something specific for Stu. Some nice, uh, um, nice beers in Brew York. Uh, I'm sure. I'm yeah. very aware. Um, Brew York's listening. Want to send any? We, we have we have other, other, other lines into Brew York. All right, good. Uh, so, the next day, I toddled off to Asda at lunchtime, and I was like, right, Paul really liked that one, and Paul really liked that one. And then, Sam had mentioned one, something Ignis and Gunner or something, but it was passion fruit. And then I got another one, I had to make a decision on one, and I was like, I'll use my initiative. <laughs> Uh, and I'll get this, and it was... Did it look nice? <laughs> the actual can look nice? Oh, very much so. Right, that's what I'd go for. Pineapple milkshake. Oh. Yeah. Fancy. I know. You know, if you were back on the booze, I would love to, like, get a selection of little tiny glasses of them and just make you guess what flavour each <laughs> one of them is. I'd be like, it's beer flavour. beer. It smells like beer, that. It smells, it smells a bit like, fruity, it but... smells a lot like beer. Couldn't tell you what, bit, what fruit it was. <sighs> it's... It it makes my head hurt. Like I walked away from it and came home. I was like, "There's just there's just so many of them." Yeah, but it's the same with gin. All these uh, flavored gins, and that's worse. Well, I had to buy gin, so oh, gin's the worst. So I uh, over the course, I've had to buy the the wanky beers. I've had to get a bottle of gin. I've had to get a bottle of rum, and I had to get a uh, scotch. Now. I got scotch for Ed and he actually ended up inadvertently helping me out because he'd been out and got absolutely hammered at the Christmas party but told me what he was drinking. So I was like, 
Well, he obviously likes that because he got drunk and he never gets drunk. I'll get that. Now he can't drink because he got drunk. <laughs> Probably. Went into the shop and was like, oh, all right. So uh, me, me and Sam went out on that one. But that fucking gin. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. That's I'm down the other gin. one. Is it because you're not 45, divorced, yes, soon. divorced, smoking female? Because that's all I think when Maybe I think gin. Maybe not soon then. That's all I think when I think well, gin. It's mother's ruin, isn't it? It's yeah. not the call it. Mm. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. When when this, when I hear about people like going out and getting drunk on gin, they see, you know, I don't want to like discriminate against people, but they all do seem to be of a certain age and sex and you know but that's probably a little outdated because like like i say i bought a bottle of gin for the seven foot giant friend of mine because that's his drink of choice these days. yeah everyone loves it everyone yeah. loves it everyone loves it. it is it's had its heyday it is dying down a bit it's now. gone down a little the wanky beer is king at this point in time um, but what what spirit is going to be next I mean, for me, I'd love, like, a bourbon resurgence. It, it did come back. For, it tried to come back. I was in Sutler's, it used to be called. Now it's yeah. a Fosgate something or other. Pavement, is it? And I had a, this, whatever it was, it was a double something and fever tree cola. And for the entire round, two drinks, £25. <gasps> oh. And it didn't tell me how much it was when they were pouring it. Oh, wow. It wasn't that nice. The fever tree cola made ruined it. So, I, there are certain things that I had to let go of. Um, nearly three years ago, I let go of alcohol. Around about the time that, um, like I like say, wanky beer was not a thing when I no. was drinking alcohol. And, and now every, it's you know, massive. Man and his dog makes... Gin. You know, gin, yeah. gin was the, the big, the first big thing. Now, I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to start if I went back to drinking. Because my drink of choice was like, I'll have Jack and Coke, please, mate. Yeah. That, that's all I knew how to was. whiskey. Yeah. If I was pushing the boat out, I'll have make a smack and oh, diet, yeah, and diet yeah. Coke, please, mate. Yeah. That's, uh, so, that was where, that was where, it, where it ended for me. Not for much longer. No. Um, there are there are other things that we won't go into, but again, when I got out of the out of the, out of that whatever you want to call it, everything got cool when I left. It's like, oh man, that was loads of fun. I do like a, a I do do like a wanky beer now and again. I, I I'm I'm not on board. I think, but it's not my go to. It's not. I wouldn't. Like, go to a bar and go, oh, can I try one of them wanky beers that you got in the fridge there? A third? Did you have a third? It's called a schooner. Oh, you know, and I would drink a schooner, thanks. I drink many a schooner. I am aware of this. I have had to order you schooners. Yeah, with a straight face as well. Can I have a sailboat it's, of that wanky beer? It's a good size drink to have. Can because I have a it means you can It means you can try other drinks and not feel too full from drinking a pint. <laughs> Why did I bother coming on this? You are literally just gonna schooner. Like, call me a you'll just call me a hipster all the way through. I this don't and think I need to at this part. I think you've outed yourself already. What? Avocado on toast. Sorry, smashed avocado and wanky beers in thirds. Uh, as I said, I don't think I need to out you at this point. So. While I'm wearing my Doc Martens here, and uh, yeah. Um. That's actually. I mean, I don't have anything else from the last week. Uh, it's been it's been a bonkers time. Uh, at this point in time, this is the first podcast that's been recorded in the new old podcast studio. So originally, when the podcast started, we started in here. How do you get more people in here? Oh, honestly, I cannot wait for summer when we have to do a four or five man podcast in this room. I used to sit under the window, and then we'd have two people there. Somebody, so sometimes people used to have to sit outside. You're gonna need like a hook on the ceiling for the mic. What and then, you, what do you think I'm gonna do with the four tripods for the four cameras? The fucking hell are they gonna go? Four cameras. 
<coughs> four candles. Candles. You've got corners of the room. Fine. Oh, oh. oh, you could have little things on the ceiling again. You know, yeah. Everything goes in the ceiling. Yeah. In the chairs. Um, so this is the first podcast recorded in the new old podcast studio as we have uh, moved. Um, so the the kind, kind people, uh, podcast alums, all of them, came to help with the moving. Um, when we moved from this room to that room, originally, uh, we took that sofa and that sofa reclines, like it's got all the, the gubbins to recline stuff, so it's not the lightest of contraptions um we moved it into the other room and it was a legendary excursion i can imagine when we brought it back as we were bringing it through the door it started separating In down the middle down the middle yeah and we were like what's happening right now what's going what's on that? Uh, uh, and that's when we discovered that you can just unclip it and yeah. take it in two bits it was built in four pieces so I know that it, yeah, it, the it's four, off. the back's come yeah. off, and it's, but when we moved it originally, we moved it as one piece, and then when we moved it back. It was really difficult. Oh, it was. Because I've got a similar sofa, yeah. and when we moved back from, well, when we first moved to Sheffield, and it was like, yeah, it comes apart. Yeah. And then I really struggled to get it apart on the way back. <laughs> yeah. It kind of just separated before our eyes as we were moving it, as we were getting it through the door, and we were like, Oh, didn't know that did that um so yeah there's been a lot of like moving I, as i said to you when we got here i've i've had to let go of three large boxes of collectibles just to get back in this room when you say let them go when where did they go uh they're currently in the garage oh well that's, so they're not really gone at this point in time if certain people have their way they'll be leaving the property because one item was looked upon eBay. It's like, did you know this item's worth 150 quid? I was like, what? Do it? Yeah, 150 quid. Get it sold. So I think there's going to be a lot of that going on. Yeah, do it. Absolutely. Um, I, I wrapped some Christmas presents today. You know, I've, I've, I've literally been do, dealing with this, wrapping Christmas presents, going to shops. Shops that I should have already been to. We won't talk about it. Um, so... We're going to jump to talking about a little bit of TV, a bit Mike TV. Um, you don't watch TV? I don't. Oh. I watch Netflix. Um, I am still, for the, I believe, third or fourth week running, I am still working my way through series two of Final Space. I believe I, you finished it. I watched it, well, every week of it was on from America. Right. I, uh, America. Oh, uh, America, yeah. I um, so, some kind person sent me like the, a stream of it. You know, I, I obviously wouldn't find some illegal. A truly, le- as Sam would say, a truly legitimate copy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Evalu- yeah. A, pr- a proper evaluation copy. Yeah, um, and yeah, I I watched it every week, and um, I, to be honest, I was glad when it finished. So, I spoke to you when I'd watched the second episode, and I was like, "Is it me?" Or is Series 2 of Final Space already not very good? Starts off bad. It, it did. Doesn't get any better. So. I think there was one good episode. Well, I thought there was one good episode. I as a, which one it is. Um, as a second series, I, I, I think we both agreed at the time that the worst possible thing they could do was go, here's like 10 new characters to start awful, the series as well. Awful characters. Um. I personally feel so far it has got better as it's gone along because you now know who these characters are. They've all got like layers and stuff. Yeah, they've all got a bit of a backstory now. Yep. Um, they've brought in, like, I think, um, I was about to call him Fry. I think, <laughs> in fact, I can't even think of his name. Uh, who? The main guy. Gary. Gary. Gary oh, Goodspeed. We're all called Gary. I think Gary's mum's quite a good character. I hate Gary's mum. Because 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 she's hot because she's awful. Um, it has got better. The time episode I thought was quite good, where uh, little Carto's stuck in the in the other side of the time rift. Um, 
it's it has got better, but it started out badly. So it's probably just about getting back to where series one was. Series one was so good. I think with anything like that, it's very much a case of we started out great because we had a great story, and now we've got a second series. What the fuck do we do? I have seen some posts kind of from uh, Olin, what's his chops, uh, just kind of saying that, you know, he, he it was a tough season to make and, you know, and, and there was a season three and he said it's going to be better. So hopefully it's like a learning curve for him. Something that I saw, I was coding some podcasts uh, over the weekend, as I mentioned, and it was at the time that I was watching Daybreak. What, the uh, ITV News channel in the morning? Yeah. All oh, right. The Netflix original. So when I had to go and get a picture for it to put on the video for the podcast, when I had a look, there was a thing saying that it's been cancelled by Netflix. Oh, really? So I don't know if it's that they've done a... or they're doing a second series, but it's already been cancelled, or if it's been cancelled before doing a second series. I don't think I've watched it. Is that the zombie one, though? Kind of... Post-apocalyptic. High like, schoolers. Yeah, high schoolers. Yeah. Um, it... It was an interesting watch. I enjoyed it, but there was some bits in it that were a bit tough going. It's a coming-of-age drama in a post-apocalyptic setting. And Matthew Broderick's in it. Um, So... Is that a teenager? Well, he plays the school principal. Oh. Um, So, it's... There was some very good stuff in it, and there was also some stuff where it was like, you know, because you're not a teenager, so you're not, so you're having to like cast your mind back to when you were, sort of thing. Um, so I'm still, I'm still watching Final Space. Uh, I'm stuck in this thing at the moment where um, my viewing time is very restricted. Um, I don't get as much viewing time during the day now. I don't get as much on an evening because my evenings are very much... I I have to pick my time very carefully these days and it's often I could watch this or play that game. And that time is usually an hour. And you don't want to... For me, I don't want to start a game too late on. Because I, I, you get into it yeah. and then it gets too late. Yeah, I, I got caught in that the other day. I was like, I'll just put this on for a little bit. And an hour and a half later, I was like, yeah. shit, now I'm going to bed I did it last late. night. It was, uh, I was playing Control. And um, so I was just putting it on for, you know, half an hour. Midnight, it's like, oh. That game sucks you in, though. Um, to keep things nice and current. Oh, fuck off. Come on. Piece of shit. Uh, to keep things nice and current, uh, the, other th- the other thing I'm watching, uh, which I'm watching in the game... Uh, is uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, Bonkers anime that I still really can't work out. Yeah, so um, I'll tell you something. It's been really interesting watching it this time around. I've seen it like multiple, multiple times. But I'm finding it more interesting watching it this time around because I don't think I've actually sat down and watched it. Is this the rewatch of the series that came on Netflix? Yeah. And that people complained about the end song was missing? So they didn't pay for the rights for Fly Me to the Moon. Right. So it doesn't have Fly Me to the Moon on the end of the episode. And the subtitles have been changed in some of the episodes towards the back end to soften the homosexual relationship. Right. Or one of the homosexual relationships. Um, it's been super interesting watching it this time around. Uh, I can't really explain it. I'm watching it in the gym, so I'm watching it with no sound. But I'm watching it subtitled, which this time around I've realised could be the first time I've watched it subtitled. You could take your Oculus to the gym, though. Perfect thing to watch it on. I, I, I'm not sure how that would work. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be connected, does it? You could... No. Upload something onto it? Yeah. That look a bit weird, but... Well, I'd be in the gym. <laughs> then you don't have to look at anyone else. Just At the time I go to the gym, I went to the gym last night, I was the only person there. 
I'm still in two minds whether I might go this evening. I imagine I'll be the only person there tonight as well. And then you realise you were just actually at JJB on the fitness equipment. Uh, Instead of the gym. Uh, is that what that was? Um... I watched the episode last night where there's the angel that splits into two. God, it's been a long time since and, I watched uh, this. Shinji and Oscar have to sync up to do the to kill the uh, the angel that splits into two. Um, I always I always like it when Oscar comes into it, and then it's always downhill from <laughs> because she is such a complex character. It's uh, yeah. It's an enjoyable thing. And I suggested to Sam about doing a watch along podcast. And I think it'd be an interesting thing to like sit and watch the episode and break it down as you go, sort of thing. Problem um, is if you're videoing it Well You'd have but, to not show Yeah, you just wouldn't show it. Yeah. Um, like a reaction video. Oh reaction video. A long one. Uh your favourite person's been doing uh, a couple of watch alongs with uh, Chris Jericho. For little movies and stuff, they'll do one on. They'll do half the film on. When you say my favorite person, yeah. Do you mean that cock end who was Kevin Smith? Wow. Um, yeah, they'll do half the half the movie on one podcast and half the movie on the other podcast. Waste of that's space that's space called somewhere. building a brand, right there, baby. Waste of friggin' air. That's who he is. So, that's all the TV I've watched. I haven't watched any movies. What are you watching at the moment? I was going to say, what am I watching? May I am watching one of the best things I've watched on Netflix in a long time. It's called Midnight Diner, right? And it's basically it's a little Japanese TV show, right? About a diner that opens, a little sushi, well, a little di- Japanese diner, sells all kinds of stuff, opens from midnight till seven in the morning. And it's just about like the customers that come in and like, the stories behind the customers it is fantastic. Is it it's like? Is it real? Like no, real? no. It's like like a like a Japanese TV show. Oh, okay. And it is amazing. It's just yeah, master makes whatever he can if he's got the ingredients. And he just makes his dishes for people, and they come in, and you find out about their backstory, and yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay. It's like proper kind of relaxing when you watch it as well. It's because it's just. A nice watch. What was... Uh, I haven't watched any films, uh, so I can't talk about films, but uh, what was the last movie you watched? At the cinema or at home? Oh, uh, either. Either. What you talk about? Whatever you want. Uh, at home, uh, the last movie I watched was probably Elf, because it's Christmas. Oh, dear. You gotta watch Elf. No, you don't. You do. It's you it's don't. not the worst Christmas. Oh. It's not the worst Christmas movie. Oh, but it but it is. It's irritating. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. I've watched bits of movies. You know when like they're on TV and you're like. So oh, I was gonna that? say. I was gonna say. Um, so we moved everything in here. I did the important bits. Certain technology. Certain old technology, of course. So I had the TV unit like there. TV not on it. I had all the cables for all the surround sound down the back. I'm yep. laid on the floor. I'm plugging them in, and, and I was like, "I was like, I've got a great idea." I pl- no, no, work from the furthest away point. Work all the way along to the last one. Got everything plugged in. Move the TV unit into place. Put the TV on it. Plug the TV in. All the other cables. Yeah. Sat down. So I was like, right, I need something to test surround sound. So I went on to Netflix, I was like, uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Didn't have the movie, did have the TV series. No good to me. I was like, uh, bad boys. And I'll search. It's like, oh man, they've only got the second one. What happens in the second one? And then I was like, no, that isn't the second one. That's the first one. Perfect. Put it on. Started it off and I was like, like my spider sense was tingling. I was like, something isn't right it's like, something doesn't sound right. So I was like, listening, there's a speaker behind there. I was listening to that. I was like, definitely sound coming out of this speaker. Cool. I listened to that one. Definitely sound. This one. Definitely sound. Whoa, what's this? This guy over here. 
quiet as a church mouse. Do you not have like a setup option on your surround system? Oh, I've got a thing somewhere that I could do it. So I was like, oh, oh no. So then I like I put the first episode of Breaking Bad on because I know that's got the bit with the RV and like I yeah. need something with like sound all around. Again, I was like, I can hear sound all the way around apart from there. Put Fast Seven. Nice, good choice. Skipped it forward past the bit of the hospital at the beginning yeah. and I got it where the car's driving through the mountains. So I was like, no, we've definitely got no sound. And all I could think was, I've got to take the TV off the TV unit, move the TV unit back out and try and work out what's not oh. plugged in. In the end, managed to rotate the unit. Nice. Get a get a torch, a phone torch down the back, and found that it's those pins where you have to push the spring loaded thing and put put the pin in. Do that. Yeah. The bottom one. I'd, instead of putting it in, I'd put it between the two oh. things. So I was just like, Well, at least it was an easy fix. Press play. Oh, sound. Um, so I watched the beginning of about four films and a TV series while I was going, why is it not working? Um, let's talk about some... I was going to say, I did go see another film. You did go see... Yeah. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it because it's getting, I, it's getting such good reviews. I can't talk about it too much, obviously. Obviously. At this point... At this point in time, you can't talk about no, it. No, and even if this podcast comes out next week, I don't really want to talk about it because people are still going to see it. Mm. But I went to see sure. Star Wars. Rise of Skywalker. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what that film was. Terrible. About two and a half hours. You'll never get back. No, it, it was it was fun. It was uh, it was fan service. It was um, you know when like people watch movies and you're like, oh yeah, I only like it because it's more of whatever. Like people watch the prequels, I like it because it's more Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's a bit like that. I like it because it was more Star Wars. It wasn't particularly good, but it was more Star Wars. I have I have well and truly tuned out of the Star Wars franchise, other than, you know, any games that might come out. Uh, I do like a nice Star Wars game. Um, I hear they're not great. <laughs> I hear the latest Star Wars film is not great. Like, it's had some of the worst reviews of a Star Wars film since The Phantom Menace. Um, I'd like to watch it again. I'm not a lot worry. of people have said that. I've noticed a lot of reviews of indiv- like actual people that I know have said I need to watch it again. The first 20 minutes of that movie is basically just trying to undo the last movie and it goes so quickly that you're kind of like, wow, that's like a mess, but you kind of want to watch it again. I think what is coming out from the whole sort of I don't want to use the word saga because, you know, I mean saga as in it's been an absolute shit show, is that for three films, they shouldn't have had two different directors. JJ Absolutely should not. have done the second one. Should have done them all. Um, however, I didn't like... I can't, This is how bad it is. I can't remember the names of these films. Whichever the... Whichever number seven... The name of number seven... What was it? For is it the Force Awakens? Yes, it is the Force Awakens. Then the Last, Last Jedi, Jedi, and then the Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Right, uh, I didn't like it, and then I watched the last the. I've just said the name. Of it, the Force Awakens. No, no. Next right, one. Right, uh, the, um, Last Jedi. Yeah, I watched. <laughs> I watched that, and I seem to think I liked that one. That's the only one I didn't more. see in the cinema. I did not bother seeing that one in the cinema. Um, and then, like, yeah, this one has had some of the worst reviews, not only of a film, but of a Star Wars film since The Phantom Menace. I mean, Solo had bad reviews, but it didn't have this bad a review. Yeah, but is it because of Ryan Johnson? Is that what This is what a lot of the reviews say. I don't know. I don't particularly have if a lot of interest in it. If he had made a film like he did... And then JJ had to come along and try and basically undo, pick apart everything that he had. Yeah, done I, in I, the film. I get it. I, I just, I'm so far past care. But you're right. They should never have split the directors. It should have been JJ for all three. 
And I honestly don't know whether that would have made these three films better, having watched we'll never know. The Force we'll never Awakens. Know. Yeah. I hindsight's don't think a wonderful so. thing. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um I won't be going to cinema to see it. I will more than likely end up with a copy of it in this house. I'll probably sit down and watch it and I'll go. Will you get it in three D? I haven't got anything to watch on 3D anymore. Because 3 ds are fad, and I've told you that years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I actually binned uh, some 3D glasses the other day. I think I've still got some. I don't have a 3D TV. I've still got some, but I binned some the other day. Like I say, looking at this room now, I don't know where all that stuff went originally. Yeah. Three large boxes have left this room. I honestly don't know where it all went. You know, I'm still struggling. I haven't put like that picture up and stuff. Um, let's talk computer games. Right. So I'd like to point out that I listened to your Game of the Year <laughs> podcasts, part one and two. I didn't know if you were going to bring it up. Well, no, I'm not bringing that up. I'm bringing up the fact that uh, you talked about Control. It's a game I've not really looked into. It kind of passed me by. Um, and now I thought, I thought oh, well, that, the fact that that could have been their game of the year, well, okay, I'll have a look into it. And I bought it, got mm. picked up a new copy up for mm. £25 from Smith's Toys, of all places. Nice. Bargain. That's an absolute bargain. bargain. Yeah, because everywhere is selling for like 35 at the cheapest. I saw it at 50 quid yeah. when I went to buy it. So, yeah, it did a little, got like a price buy app, and you just type in what you mm. want, and it comes up. Great. Um, played it. I can't stop playing it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Obviously, I'm going to get up to the point where you get stuck. But right now, I'm at that point where so, I just want to keep playing it. Obviously, I coded those podcasts recently. I have this... It's like... It, it, it's like loss. Because, like I said, in that podcast, I loved that game there was actual love for that game you could it's see the, the, game. it's beautiful the the people that made that game made it with love you can see that so it much stands detail. out Such it's beautiful game. there's a lot uh, a lot of layers to it it's things like when you walk through like corridors and rooms and stuff and it's the people yeah. suspended in midair yeah. that's that terrifying thing. absolutely there's so I didn't play much play it in surround sound no no there's so much to that game, and it and it was heartbreaking when I reached a point where I was like, I cannot continue playing this game because I can't get any further. I'm I'm not good enough to play this game. I th I thought I was up to a bit like that. Um, it was like what the first boss I got up to, which was found quite hard. It was the um, it was like an invisible one, and it kept like you saw it kind of like shifting around the yeah. the room, and all of a sudden it appears, and you yep. have to. Yeah, yeah, I thought I died several times at that point. And I thought, um, oh, I'm not going to get past it. I there, there was a lot of points in that game where I honestly thought I, I wasn't going to get past it, and then it kind of it'd be like like you change your gun load out. Yeah. Um, because there was a point where I had the I don't know how many you've got, so I don't want to ruin anything. I think I've got them all. I've got the spinner. I've got the shatter. I've the got other the, one that's like a shotgun. Yeah. So I had the shotgun that's set the shatter, up yeah. and the normal gun. I, I used the normal for everything. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, really struggling. And I switched out the shotgun for the... Um, spinner. So I put the... The spinner's like the machine gun, yeah. isn't it? So I, I, the configuration I ended up with was the machine gun, the spinner. Yeah. And the one that you charge up. Oh, right. Yeah. And like, kinda... like, it's like a... It punches through stuff. Yeah. So I'd use that for bosses because you like proper pound them when you hit them. Obviously, you could also upgrade it. Um, there was loads of points in that game where I was like, oh, this is where... But you'd change something and you'd make it better. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I mean, you've listened to it and I imagine anybody who cares has listened to it. I reached a point where I went away and did other stuff. I levelled up and came back and still couldn't do it. I truly believe that I'd done it wrong. I watched... I sat, I sat in that chair in a different room, in that chair watching videos on YouTube going, what am I doing wrong? And it was just, I just didn't have the ability to do the bit that I needed to do. And I, to, to my knowledge, it was Maybe quite you're just the playing way. It wrong. I was probably playing it wrong. Speaking of playing games wrong. No, that's not. <laughs> um, I have played, in the last week, I've played three games. Um, 
three console games because I'm going to come on to VR in a bit. Okay. Uh, I've played three console games in the last week. One of them, I I knew it was on my list and I knew you were coming to do the podcast and I was a bit like... Which you're still shocked at. Yeah. I was like, I, I have to review this game in a certain way, but it's a game that I've recommended to you and I don't want you to go, you recommended a game to me and then you've <laughs> then gone on to say it's not very good because that's not what well, I'm about to say. You keep talking about Need for Speed to so me. So the game is Need for Speed. <clears throat> Need for Speed is uh, Need for Speed Heat is a really good game. It's the way I describe it to people is: Do you remember when Need for Speed used to be fun? Now you have to kind of kind of cast your mind way back because Need for Speed stopped being fun at one point because they went, "Oh, we need to do this with it." No, you don't. We need to make it Fast and the Furious. Yeah, you don't. it has to be Fast and the Furious. That last one was and it, and it has to be police chases. See, that last one has that put me off. That I, I don't know if I can go back to the series. I had the last one. I played it so far, got stuck in a race that I couldn't do and sold it because I was like, this is pointless. I hated it. I hated it from day one. So I can understand you going, I don't want it because of that. It's not that. It is old school need for speed with a twist. And the twist is the police. They right. can't get away from that aspect. I think need for speed is always going to happen. Yeah, it. but can, well, can, do you have a choice of playing as the police? No. Oh. No. See, that's what they're missing out on. So it's split... In, in half. So you race during the day, uh, yeah. sanctioned races. So most of them are circuit races. On closed roads, during the day, you race, you make money. Simple. Or you choose to race at night. You don't get any money, although every now and then you do, which is weird. But you get reputation. But it's illegal street racing at night. And that is where the police come into it. So you build up reputation, the more reputation, the higher your level, the higher level, more cars, parts, and uh, missions you get. So it's broken down like that. The majority of the races at night are sprints, so you don't have to worry about going round and round and round. Uh, then every now and then you get a drift one to do, uh, and then there's been an off-road section. The biggest issue that I've had with the game, I will recommend this game to, to anybody, I've recommended it to you. Yeah. The biggest issue I've got with the game is that uh, it unlocks new races and new races and new races, both day and night, which is great. Unlocks different types. So, like I said, there was an off-road section where new characters came into it and they were off-road racers and you go and do off-road racing. You've got a guy who's like, oh, come and help me test some tracks. And then after a while, he's like, I tell you what, I'll give you a car if you can beat me in the race. So, okay, there's an incentive all that. The story missions, I comp I completed those story missions a long time ago. And I was like, so have I finished the game? Went back into it and it was like, here's a load, here's a load more missions. It's like, okay. So it's like a game that has like side missions and story missions. But the story missions have been over for a while. I've got to the point now where I'm just grinding. So there's very few new missions and the only incentive is to get your level up to unlock cars and parts. And it's all supercars at this point in time. Like my current cars are Lamborghini, uh, a Lamborghini Huracan. Hurricane? Yeah. All oh, right. But not in the game. In the game it's called a Huracan. Right. Because every time they say it, I'm chasing a, a Lamborghini Huracan. It's like, no, you're not, mate. Um, it's been a great game. I'm still playing it. So go back to it. I love sitting down and having a bit of going driving game. I don't know if I've got any kind of space for a driving game in my... Uh, I I always feel in like... In my wheelhouse. What, like something... A driving game something to, good to have as a... Almost like a back burner game. Need for Speed has been my like main game for a while. Um, the other thing I, that I had been playing up until the other day, unfortunately for you, was uh, I was playing Jedi Fallen Order again for the second time. Uh, chopping and changing between that and Need for Speed, uh, but the other night I finished it for the second time. Um, one of those things that I, I know they've said they're not going to do it, 
and I know the reasons why they're not going to do it, but I hope that Respawn give it a good a good while, but then they do release a new game plus. Because I know why they've said they're not going to, but I do think it would make for an interesting playthrough. Does it leave it like at a point where there could be like downloadable content, new planets? <sighs> I mean, I, I, I never, I didn't finish it. It's yes. I don't know how it ends and what the. To a degree, I don't know what purpose it would serve. If somebody said, "Oh, they're doing a DLC," I'd be like, "Of what?" It's very. It just seems odd that so the company a very, would release, especially EA, would release a game yeah. without it's, some kind of DLC. I mean, they've already sort of kind of announced a sequel. Yeah, um, respawn. And I know and you're not a big fan of uh, mobile phones and that. Let me just have a quick look at um, like season pass for it or something like that. I, uh, yeah, I've seen nothing about it at all, which kind of makes me think, especially at this point, that there's probably not going to be one because I don't know what it would add if they were like, "Oh, here's another planet to go and explore." It's like, but you'd have to explore it after finishing the game. What would it bring to the game? EA confirms Star Wars Jedi Fallen All will not have a season pass. There you go. Wow. EA is taking a new approach with Jedi Fallen Order. Because wow. you've got to think, like, EA have had some fairly substantial issues recently, in the last in the last year or so, with releasing games that have flopped hard. Yeah, there's um, PC Games says there's not, no DLC planned either. There you go. So, um... So, a subject that I thought would be interesting to discuss, maybe with you, I don't know if we've ever spoken about this game, which seems really weird. I finished Jedi Fallen Order for the second time, and I went, hmm, need something new to play. Not necessarily new. I have an extensive collection, because I like to go back and play things again. Only if they're good. Only if they're good. Yeah. I generally get rid of stuff that I have, I have no intention oh, of playing again. You, there's a game you've had a game so long that you think it's actually not worth getting rid of now because it's not yeah, worth anything. There, there's stuff in there that I look to get rid of in my latest purge, and it's like, oh, this game's worth twelve pence. Yeah, Wonderful. No point. I'll keep it. Yeah. So I was like, mm, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? What do I want? I know what I fancy. God of War. Did you play God of War? I did. What did you think to it? Didn't like it. So, I am playing it at the moment, and I feel I feel a bit bad. I feel like I owe God of War an apology because I didn't, re- I didn't, it didn't get Game of the Year for me. That twenty eighteen didn't get Game of the I, Year. I've never been a God of War fan. I actually preferred the old God of War, the more hack and slash elements of God of War, yeah. and it that it took it away from this. So one of my Favourite all-time games is God of War 3. I think it is a a perfect game. It is so good. It is so well done. The HD remaster is beautiful. It is a triumph of gaming. It is hands down one of the best games ever made. And I'll put it up against anything. I I own the HD and I will often play it. It is fantastic. So to go from that to what was then released, and the mysteries around it, yeah, you know, we I don't want to spoil anything on a, what could be 10-year-old game, but the fact that Kratos was alive, we kind of knew that. Um, but living in a different mythology, it was yeah. like, how has that happened? So... There were all these mysteries. And, like you say, it was an adventure game, not a hack and slash. Yeah. But then, you know... Which you is strange. Of, you could kind of put that down to, like, new mythology, yep, new game. new direction. Yeah. So. I'm playing it at the moment. So the first thing is, put the disc in, obviously I had to install it, and then I had to install any updates, which I did. I was solely wanting to play New Game Plus, because I wanted to start with all my upgrades and stuff. I put it on, and it was like, "Oh, you need to uh, you need to pick a save to use." So I was like, "All right." I was going through all the different saves that I've got, and found that the last time I'd played God of War 
was a year to the day. <laughs> and I was like, what, what is happening right now? Going to go for my uh, yearly playthrough then? Apparently so. Yeah. It must be a thing. So I was like, that is just weird. So I put it on, uh, started playing it. I've been playing it, I, when I say non-stop, I mean, I, when I'm playing games, that's what I'm playing. I've not been playing Eve Speed and I finished Jedi a couple of nights ago. Um, so that is the game I'm playing and when I play games, that's what I'm playing. I This time around, I do feel like I maybe owe that game an apology and I don't know if it's because I played Jedi recently. Because the two games are very similar in a lot of ways, yeah, which is probably why you don't yeah, like, don't like it. it. Yeah. Um, but, Dark Souls a, a try as well, and then that. Uh, um, good thanks. What was that other one that came out on PlayStation? Bloodborne. That's the one here. You want to get yourself uh, the Surge? That's. I wonder what I played the when that came. Wasn't that the one that came on? Um... I bought that because it was twenty quid, and I was like, let's give this a go. No. Let's get yeah, it was great. And Surge two as well. Surge two, yeah. yeah. Um, Surge tanking from from, uh, the massively underrated system. (laughs) Um, The fact that I feel I owe an apology, um, I'm playing it at the moment. It's a beautiful game. It's it's very well done. It's very well crafted. Yeah. I think the reason that great. I didn't. Oh, it looks amazing. Axe physics are you know that that that's the fun bit of the game. Yeah, I love leaving it behind. I, I, like there's a time where I just throw the axe into something so I can leave it behind. I mean, you know, it's 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 a total rip off of you know Thor. Yeah, yeah. but then Thor's in it, so yeah. come for his uh, axe hammer. <clears throat> come for his hammer. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying playing that game again. Um, we're two days away from Christmas. I don't know if I'll get it finished before Christmas. I don't know what Father Christmas might bring. Me. I was going to say, is there anything on your Christmas list that you want game wise? There's three games. Um, it might. It's one of those. It might not be surprising what some of them are because they're games that I've left that I haven't got over the course of the year. So there's um, the Outer Worlds. Yeah, that's a hand moot gesture I'm doing. Yeah, uh, for the audio listeners. Yeah. Uh, there's a game called Greedfall. I heard talking about this. I still know nothing about it. I haven't seen um, anything about it. I thought it was a PC only thing. To pirates do. and fantasy. So it's like taking like actual pirates but putting them into a fantasy setting. So like monsters and things like that. Um, it had very mixed reviews. Yeah. But the majority of reviews were it's quite good. What's that? Third and the third one is Resident Evil 2. Yeah. I refused to pay £47 for it when it came out. I think I played the demo. Um, and Sam just keeps going, but it's a ground-up remake. You know I me, mean? I don't particularly like horror games. You know, I, I, or horror movies. Hmm. A bit of a wuss, babe. I don't think so. I just don't like that genre. And, yeah, the whole constantly getting chased by Mr. X mm-hmm. just looks a bit... Yeah, I mean... I don't need that. And, you know, when I shoot a zombie in the head, I want it to die. Yeah. I don't want it to get back up again. Yeah, there are elements of it that I'm a bit unsure about. But I think I want to give it a whirl to find out because you're never going to know unless you give it a play. Well, so. I can recommend Price Spy as a, a good... Yes. Uh, I think, uh, well, last time I looked, you could get it for 20 quid. Yeah. So it was one of them. Uh, as I said to you, I'll be trolling the sales um, after Christmas because that's how I want. Hashtag sale. Air quotes. Air quotes sales, Air quote sales yeah. yeah, very much so. Um, so, a little bit of VR. Do you know what? I've not really touched on it too much. You've done something that I haven't, which is you've gone down the the link route. I have. Yeah. Um, how are you finding it? Fantastic. Absolutely. Bear in mind, I am not running the, the, the massive three grand tower PC that your friend has obviously got and mm. I'm just running it from a laptop and yeah. it runs fantastic it's I had no problems with it whatsoever yeah. you know I've got the cable that they recommended and yeah I, I got um, Arizona Sunshine. Sunshine yeah and I got it for I got it for <coughs> 15 quid because it was on the um, Oculus Rift sale I paid 30 for it exactly this is the thing yeah. Quest owners are getting kind of they've done it because it's 
being so cheap and it was even I think it was six pound on the uh, on the bloody Steam store the mm. other day. Yeah, um, there has been a quest sale. So every day, if you go on the app, every day there's been sale. a sale on a, for one game a day. Uh, at this point in time, I might pick most of them, most of them up. <laughs> Bought a game for the quest today for five. I've not even um, looked. What did you buy today? Um, one of the highest rated games of all time. The oh, uh, super hot. No, the uh, the boxing. Oh really? Um, what was it called? Thrill of the Fight or something? Something like that. Uh, it's one of the highest rated games ever. I mean, when Drunken Bar Fights comes on, then I'll be picking it well, up. Um, and I got, yesterday I got Moss. But that wasn't for me. So. Yeah, that was, yeah, uh, it's not, not my sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but. On that um, pirate, Space Pirate Simulator, what it's called? I played. <laughs> Excuse me, I played the demo of that. That was all right. Yeah, but no. I'd, yeah. I'd, if I picked it, if I could get it cheap, I'd get it. Mm. Um, I, I don't know what tomorrow's game will be. I, I, it's one of those, I was like, it won't be what I want, because I'd like the climb to be cheaper. That'll never happen for no. a while. Um, and the other one that I want is Red Matter. Sorrento, I think, was cheaper, I saw. It was. Did you get um, it? No. Oh. Um, what was the other one I picked up the other day? That was cheap. Now you've said this, I will be checking it tomorrow because check it each day. Yeah. Because like I say, and it goes on, it goes on sale for twenty four hours. Right. Um. So I picked up that fighting one. I installed it uh today, and that moss, like I say, not for me. But that's not the game I want to talk about. <laughs> okay. The game I want to talk about is Beat Saber. Now, I know you haven't got it and so far haven't done the Beat Saber, so it's not no. the best one to talk about. And I don't like when you messaged me the other day and said, oh, release a new music pack. And I was like, what was it? And you said Green Day. Mm. And I hate Green Day. And I find Green... That's like something that I would never expect to be on Beat Saber. So, they, uh, there's an actual quote on the Green Day pack from the main guy from Green Day saying about how he has I don't know um, yeah. honestly I think we're probably days away from a Metallica Beat Saber pack oh, without a doubt Metallica, that would make Metallica the, put their name on everything yeah that would make the most sense for the next one to be on there um, it's becoming Guitar Hero it is yeah, and and it and it and it is Guitar Hero it's based on Guitar Hero and the fact that there's I mean you've got things like Pistol Whip came next and there's, a, there's another one um, where you ride rails, and then there's another one coming where it's like again, it's a shoot, and you shoot things to make music. There's a it's it's a big thing, but um, I got the Green Day pack because I was like, it's something different is to it the dance. Music. New Green Day or is it old Green Day or is it a mix? It's mix. Oh, that's not too bad then. So. I might, I don't know if I can look and tell you what the songs are. Um, American Idiot. Idiot is one of them. Boulevard of Broken Dreams, <laughs> Minority, Holiday. There's six songs. It sounds like we're all from the same era. Um, so. Which is a song. I got that. Just because it was different, because it wasn't dance music. Yeah. And although dance music and beats ever go together real nice, Absolutely. it was something different. Um, I, I got for my eldest the Panic at the Disco mu music pack because it had The Greatest Showman, and she's a big Greatest Showman fan. So. Um, these kids. It, it's that I've bought some of these packs. How much are the packs? Sorry. So they're like six quid. For oh, six tracks. For six songs, or they're one fifty each. So you're you're making a saving by buying the whole pack. Yeah. Um, so that was that. I think the Panic in the Disco one was even cheaper because it's only four tracks. It might be a fiver or something. Because I got the Green Day, I actually put Beat Saber on, which I haven't done in a while because I've got so much other stuff. You know, if I'm going to play a music game. Definitely going to be Pistol Whip. Oh, without played, doubt. Played Pistol Whip the other day. Love it. Yeah. I do find that when I put it on, I only ever put the same song on. 
Which one? Oh, the Death. Red of the Dark one. Oh. No, Death. Oh, right. I bring you Death. Um, get that on. Get on no fail. Dual guns. I did try it on the hardest setting. Stick it on hard. Oh, my Go God. Yeah. Nuts. I am actually getting to the point now where I'm like, I think I might be able to do it. The th- no way. No I think way. I might be able to do I've it. I've only played the first one <laughs> on... I think I played it on normal with Eagle Eye. Uh, that Eagle Eye. Single gun Eagle Eye. Oh, that is... You don't realise how much you rely on the just wildly yeah, pointed in a direction. Absolutely. Holy smokes. All, all rhythm is gone. You're just showing so many bullets to these people. So I've been playing Beats over the last two or three days. And what I've found is, like, I've now been, like, watching videos on YouTube, like, how to get better at Beat Saber, how to get, like, up to expert and stuff. It's been around, like, on the advert and things. So they've recently released a free update, which is 90 degree and 360 levels. So you have to, like, spin around and stuff. Tried 90 degree earlier, not something off the table, and stopped playing it. Um, Instantly. <laughs> So I can imagine you falling on the floor. Or something oh, absolutely! There's, uh, there's. You too, it's a garden, mate. And then you've got to. You're not allowed to play outside. Why not? If it's dark enough, it'll be fine. I'm sure. Um, but something that I like a small achievement is that I managed to do my first hard Beat Saber track oh. the other day, and now I'm just like going to each of the tracks and going, "Can I do it on hard?" And some of them it's like, "Yes, I can." I've like completed like a few on hard, and others it's like absolutely not. Yeah, that so, was um, that was the same with pistol whip. Yeah, it's. I did them all on easy, started going through a normal, and then yeah, it's just like oh no, no. I had three. I had three things on the list to talk about VR, and I've actually inadvertently talked about the third one because it was uh, the Christmas sale. Oh, well, there so you, uh, so you don't have to do it in a, in a list format, do you? you can just do it in- no. Um, that is, I mean, that's basically like the games. Uh, I haven't watched any films, but I'm I'm hoping to rectify that. Next week is my week for watching films. I've got a line, I've line up of films that I want to get watched. What films? I want to watch The Irishman. <laughs> Utility. Hello there. Um, and the thing about that is it's like, Oh, I'll just sit down to watch a three and a half really? hour movie. Did you hear the thing about Scorsese said now about it's like the Irishman could be my last film because there's no like room for my films in cinema anymore. So he's had all these issues with about the Marvel movies. He's just being a little shitty kid, spat his dummy. But then he was supposed to be meeting with uh, Feige, wasn't he? Oh, he's Scorsese's just really doing my head in. Oh, my old movies aren't cinema. But, great. Oh, it's going to be makes, my film. He makes great films. He does make great films. The, the thing the about it is... All the fucking scene. I was like... Oh, oh is this a, a gangster film, is it? About, uh, yeah. With Robert De Niro in it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, is it Scott Sears? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it looks so good. It does look so good. Um, but, For whatever reason, I want to watch the, uh, the old uh, Six Underground Ryan Reynolds, Michael Bay movie. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, yeah. I've got, I will, I'm just glad it's on Netflix and it's free. Yeah, basically. Um, there was another one. I, I think I might I might just watch El Camino rather than going back and watching Breaking That's good. Bad. It's good, worth watching. Um, I am uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully getting a film for Christmas that I really want to watch. And I think I want to save it until New Year's Eve. It's how exciting my New Year's Eve is going to be. I go to Chinese, get big old Chinese, mm-hmm. sit down and hopefully watch uh, Hobson Shaw. I am hoping that Hobson Shaw makes wings its way in Father Christmas's. Oh, me too. Large if sack. not, I'm going to go buy it because <laughs> I want to watch it. Um, so yeah, I haven't watched any films, but next week's going to be my film watching week. I've played a few games. I've done a little bit this week. Um, as I normally do, uh, I don't know. Oh, well, I'm. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and guess this is not the subject for you. Um, normally, I finish up by letting the people know whether I've been to the gym or not this week. Um, I haven't. I haven't been in the gym. No? No. There you go. No? What what, what uh, workout routine have you uh, got going at the moment? Uh, walk to work. 
Yeah. Sometimes back, walk in the town. I walk to my mum's one, so it's, a, it's quite a distance. Walk it's quite away from yours. Straight on the cycle track. Yeah, all right. Wow. Yeah, it's a good walk. Yeah, the weather's walk. crap, so I don't go out on the bike. So. Yeah. Um, I can confirm that I went to the gym last night. A little, little, little bit of chest. Well done. Chest day. Well done for the gym. Um, uh, what day is it today? Monday. It's, yeah, it is, yeah. So that was Sunday. Saturday. You've actually not t- really touched on when gym pass ends, what is the cookie plan? I honestly don't know. Um, a, there's a pure gym that's supposed to be opening on Layerthorpe. On where uh, Office uh, Depot used to be. Yeah, it was Staples. Called. Yeah. Oh, Staples years ago. Uh, I'm stuck in the freaking right. well, Office, Office Depot or something it was called. Or yeah. The American one. Apparently. So uh, there's a pure gym opening there. When? I don't know. No, they've not done anything on it so far. No. Pure gym's like 15 quid a month. It's pretty cheap. And it's 24-7. It is. Which I need a 24-hour gym. That is, like, the only reason I'm at the gym that I'm at now is because it was 24 hours and the place I was at before that. uh, The one at Monk's Cross. I'm not going to use any names because I I, I generally don't talk too too favourably of them. Um, So if it was a situation where gym pass ended at the end of the year and the pure one was open, I would just jump ship. To, as long as it was uh, cheap enough. Like I say, it's supposed to be fifteen pound a month uh, for twenty-four hour a day access. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I've had this email from my current gym saying that I can pay them thirty pound a month, and yeah. if I'm honest, in the interim, I am going to. I'm probably going to contact them and say what sort of contract do you want yeah. to put on because you exactly. can guarantee they'll be like oh we'll sign you up pop you on this for 12 yeah. months yeah. now I have already done my 12 months with them before gym pass came along so I'm going to be like you're not sticking me on a 12 month put me on a rolling month contract yeah. and I will, be that. I will be honest with them and say because I am looking to not be at this gym anymore because I think there's a lot about you that I don't agree with um that is the basic plan. If they turn around and say it's 12 months or nothing, then it'll be nothing and I'll have to, I don't know, find an alternative. It's difficult, isn't it? Got, I'll have to go back to the uh, to the armoury, uh, clear, clear the garage out again and uh, yeah. get, get back in the old armoury. Get all your, uh, your boxes of uh, things get all, get all back, up back up here. Yeah. <laughs> back up here. Yeah. Um, I have been going to the gym. I've been doing my uh, my routines in the gym. Uh, last night I was trying. To, I'm I'm still trying to work out what my one rep max is for bench press. Um, unfortunately, when you're there on your own, you can only go up to a certain amount. <coughs> so, Mister Thomas has uh, said he's going to come and help me at some point. Um, so yeah, that's that. You got anything? You got anything you want to? Uh... Well, just want to say, enjoy the little first proper podcast experience. Well, a little trip out to the suburbs. Problem I've got is that you know I don't really know anything about NFL and football and you know all the other stuff you talk about in the other ones. So fake and wrestling, you, fake it till you make it. Yeah, I, I, so I don't think I'll be on those. Of those, of soon. those three, I know a little bit about the NFL. <laughs> I, the football, my football knowledge is purely from the podcast. I, I know like the odd football player from the, the podcast. My football knowledge is purely based on Bob Mortimer uh, and his Athletic oh, Men's podcast. Yeah, he's which got a podcast on it. Is basically it's utter nonsense. So that's my football knowledge. Um, and my wrestling knowledge spans from where me and you used to sit and watch uh, a bit of SmackDown on Sky. I kind of still would watch it, but. I, I still I still keep me on it. Still keep me on it. Keep, Watch keep on YouTube. Little bits now and again, yeah. If but I wanted to, this is what Paul always says to me. He's like, put the network on. You've got it on the thing, and I'm like, yeah. Like I say, my time is very limited. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for making the journey out. 
Um, well, yeah. And, I mean, it's one of those. I, I'm not going to invite you to come on and talk NFL football, but you're always welcome to come and talk about the uh, the darkest timeline. Uh, so the door is always open. Well, you might have to do a new mm. podcast. That'll be hey, because this one will be so popular. Hey, if the I if Cookie I start, and Luke if I start seeing some uh, some good numbers off the back of this, which it's one of those, I've got a good feeling about it. Um, then you you your people and my people might have to sit down and hash out a deal. I might do my own. You could come with mine. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I. Uh, that would be too hipster for you. You wouldn't want to do that. <gasps> What was it going to be called? Smashed Avocado. Yes, exactly what it was going to be called. <gasps> Call it Little Avocado. No, yeah. it's definitely going to be called uh, Avocado. Just Avocado Smash. Wow. Right, well, that's it from me. And I presume that's it from him. And uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, until next time, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. So there you go. What do you think of that? Bit of a different one with the guest and all, but it was always uh, good to have people on the podcast. It's good that Luke came back to do another podcast. Hopefully, if you guys like this, we might see a bit more of a regular spot from uh, our Mr. Hemingway. Uh, cheers, Luke, for coming along and, uh, and participating in the podcast once again. YouTube watchers, make sure YouTube subscribers, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Everybody jump over to cookiecast.com, check us out over there, send us some love. Um, Yeah, so that's it. Until next time, hopefully the numbers all have sorted themselves out by then and you guys can get back on track. But this was a special one, so until next one, I'm going to say bye, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.